Hi, welcome back to our study, Lessons for the Faithful from Vimy Ridge. Today, we're going to be talking about a tactic that was really perfected at the Battle of Vimy Ridge, and it's known as the Creeping Barrage. It's something that developed over uh, a time way, when we went from cannons that were fairly inaccurate to modern day artillery, which was much more accurate. And you can time when and where the shells were coming. In World War I, uh, you have to take into account what happens during the battles. And during the battles, we talked last week about how the big guns, how important artillery was to the First World War, hugely important. And the big guns would fire sometimes miles from behind the front and just pulverize enemy positions. And then they'd send in the infantry. Uh, unfortunately, what would happen is, is at the beginning of the war, the German side especially understood the importance of creating good, strong dugouts. And so German concrete a lot of times could withstand an incredible pounding. And when the big guns would stop, the Germans would get out from their bunkers and man their machine guns and catch the British or the French infantry as they were crossing no man's land and just cut them down. So this tactic came up, it was called the creeping barrage. And what you would do is, is the allies would fire their artillery just ahead of where their soldiers were marching. And one, it, would, it wouldn't give that pause for the Germans to get up and out of their trenches. And at the same time, it gave a really good cover because there'd be smoke and debris flying everywhere just in front of the, the soldiers. And it also create holes for the soldiers to jump into in case they needed to, to get out of the, the raining machine gun fire. And sometimes it worked and sometimes it, it, it didn't. And, and really, it's, it's a dangerous tactic. And at Vimy Ridge, the Canadians just about perfected it. And it, it's often given as a, as a great example of how this tactic could be used. However, they had to train and they had to trust each other quite a bit. And the Canadians were as about as close as they could get without getting hit by their own um, shrapnel and the explosions coming. But they did. And it took a lot of discipline and it took a lot of courage to march behind at this set, regular pace. And they did. Well, how does that apply to our lives today? One, we shouldn't just expect everything to just happen. Life has a certain amount of practice, a certain amount. This took practice for them to walk at this specific pace, which was not that fast. Uh, it was only between 50 and 100 yards every three minutes. But you're crossing a muddy, cold battlefield. So it, it, you needed the time. And sometimes we have to take that into account. You need time to prepare for what's facing you in the future. But as, as Christians, and the church, how can we really learn from this? Because this, a lot of this is to the faithful. And there's two things to really take into account. Um, when you're following this creeping barrage, it's actually protecting you. All this destruction that's right in front of you is actually protecting you and screening you from the hail of the enemy bullets. And that's something we don't always take comfort in. We don't take comfort in the battles that are happening. Uh, perhaps you're going through a season of suffering and you're going, oh, this isn't fun, and it's not. But it may be that that is just something you need to go through to help prepare you for the future. Uh, a good scripture to talk about as well is here, Proverbs chapter 3, verses 5 and 6. It's one that I go to a lot, but it makes sense. It says, trust in the Lord with all your heart, don't lean on your own understanding and in all your ways acknowledge him and he will direct your path. Don't be wise in your own eyes. Fear the Lord and depart from evil. It'll be health to your flesh, strength to your bones. Honor the Lord with your possessions, the first fruits of all your increase. Then your barns will be filled with plenty and your vats will overflow with new wine. My son, don't despise the discipline of the Lord. Don't detest his correction. The Lord loves those he corrects just as a father, the one he delights. Well, how do these scriptures all relate to this? All of these scriptures talk about discipline and following the Lord. One of the most dangerous places for a creeping barrage is if you get too excited and you think you can take the enemy and you start to run ahead of the creeping barrage and you're gonna get blown to bits by your own guns. And how many times have we, as the church, 
thought, we can do this, and we didn't even bother asking God. And we ran ahead of him, and it damaged us, or it damaged the church, or just it, the whole thing blew up in our face. We need to slow down and listen. In fact, that's one of the most important things about prayer. Prayer is a powerful thing, and we can really do a lot for God when we go to him in prayer and we seek his face. But if we're going to him and just saying, can you bless our ideas? Some of those are going to blow up in our face. We need to learn how to follow Jesus, walk after him, listen and obey. Listening comes first. So my encouragement to you is don't run ahead of God. That is not the safe place to be. We need to sometimes pump the brakes and just follow what the Lord has right in front of us. And yes, it's not always a fast pace in the Christian life. You know, discipleship takes a long time. When you're leading someone to Christ, that can take a long time as you build a relationship and you explain the Bible, even just explaining the Bible to somebody, it can take a long time because there's questions. If somebody's reading the Bible and they go, wow, what is going on in this chapter? Or this one is so beautiful. I want to I want to keep 1 Corinthians 13, but I want to ignore 1 Corinthians, you know, chapter 3. You can't do that. You got to see how it all comes together. And that takes time learning, studying, praying, and working together. So my biggest encouragement is two-part today. One, sometimes we think, see things that are happening and it looks kind of painful and destructive right in front of us. But in reality, it's God's going to use those things for him. And secondly, don't run ahead of God. That is not a safe place to be. So let's learn from those disciplined Canadian soldiers. And there were British that were involved. It wasn't just the Canadians. But those four Canadian divisions, three out of four completely followed their creeping barrage and took objectives the first day. And then three days later, the last division took its objective. This is unprecedented in World War I. Why? One of the reasons is they diligently and disciplined went at a steady pace and followed the artillery. And then when they reached the enemy lines, yeah, it seemed like suddenly we were upon the end, upon the enemy and taking our objective. But it wasn't suddenly, was it? No. It's a good lesson for us all to learn. And the Bible's going to encourage us in this. Follow the Lord's leading and don't run ahead of God. Hey, thanks for joining me. Have a great one. God bless.